Hi, welcome to my apartment. We moved in here around two months ago. It is a three bedroom, 860 square foot apartment on one of the higher floors of a large apartment building. In today's video, I'll be showing you all around our new place and give you a very detailed tour. I'm also going to share with you my decorating tips for creating a space that is simple and minimal, but also still warm, cozy, inviting and comfortable. And how I created these visually interesting spaces while also keeping them minimal and clutter free. Welcome back everyone, and if you're new here, this is a place where you can get tips and inspiration for living a simpler, happier, and calmer life. I make videos about minimalism, self-care, slowing down, so definitely hit subscribe down below if you haven't already, because I would love to see you again next week. So let me start showing you around, starting at the entrance. This apartment has a tiny entryway, so there's not much to see here. It comes with a coat rack in the corner, so this is where we keep our coats. When you enter, our kitchen is straight to the left. It is not very big, but it is very efficiently designed and it fits everything we own and use in the kitchen really comfortably. The main focal point of the kitchen are these white high glossy cabinets that are handleless. These give the space a very modern and clean vibe. I'm very happy to now have upper cabinets as opposed to the open shelving that we had in the previous place. Open shelving is very pretty, but this layout is much more practical. We can easily store all our serving ware, cookware, kitchen appliances in these cabinets out of sight. The counters are in a dark gray stone looking material and the same material is used for the backsplash. To give the kitchen a bit more color and personality though, since this black and white color scheme can look a little boring quite quickly, we added a few little pops of color. My favorite is the blue trash bin, as well as some brightly colored placemats, small plants, pink marble for the soaps and towels in a nice coral color. The kitchen comes with an electric stove, a dishwasher and built-in fridge and freezer. This is very luxurious for us since we're not used to having a built-in fridge this large. This apartment doesn't have a pantry, so we store our pantry food items in a few of the kitchen cabinets that we don't need for our serving ware and cookware. And my favorite drawer is, surprise surprise, my tea drawer. Moving on from the kitchen, you get into a little hallway area. From here, you can directly access the living room, as well as four doors here that lead into all different rooms. We use this simple white dresser in the hallway area to store all of our shoes. We don't like to wear shoes in the home, but there is no way to store them in the entryway. So we take them off after entering and put them in here. I prefer to keep shoes out of sight since they tend to add a lot of visual clutter. We do deep clean our shoes and this dresser occasionally to keep things fresh. On the dresser, we also have a little tray where we keep our phones whenever we're at home so they don't distract us during the day. And we have a little bowl that functions as a drop zone for our keys. Above the dresser, we're gonna add a nice mirror. I'm still looking for the right one. I'm also thinking of replacing these standard drawer pulls for more visually interesting ones. Straight on from this little hallway area is our living room. This is my favorite area of the home. I love how open and inviting it is. I'll show you how I created this cozy, warm atmosphere while still keeping it very simple, minimal and clutter free. The living room kind of consists of two main areas, the dining area right here and the sitting area right there. And I wanted to make sure to make it look cohesive and like everything just goes very naturally together. The main color scheme of this space is light neutrals for the fabrics, like beige for the chairs and light gray for the sofa combined with a very natural and warm looking light oak for the furniture. I added touches of color by using soft greens and dusty corals. I didn't want the whole area to be too matchy matchy and have everything be oak. So I combined the wood materials with metals in the form of this metal locker type dresser and black metal accents in the form of lamps, accessories and table legs. 
Another way I made this space feel warm and cozy is by including round shapes in my design. For example, with this dining table, I've been wanting to go for a round table for a while and I do not regret it. I love how it adds a touch of softness and playfulness. It's friendly yet still very clean and modern. I also used a round shape for the coffee table. This one combines solid wood oak with black metal legs. And we've had this table for a few years now. So this kind of served as a starting point for the rest of the pieces. The sofa and matching ottoman are also around two years old. I love the simple clear lines that are combined with a more playful design like the slanted armrests and the buttons. It almost has mid-century vibes, but it still looks very modern as well. And you can always add pillows with a different structure to add some more variety. The sitting area is completed by this beautiful TV stand that reminds me of the Japandi style. I love the wooden panels that give the piece a retro vibe and this furniture piece easily holds all of our entertainment items. When it comes to the spatial design of this area, I chose to put the sofa in the middle of the room instead of putting it back up against the wall. And this is a little trick that I really like to use because it really opens up the space. It makes it way more interesting. It creates extra walkways around the living area. And this isn't a very large space, but because of how the furniture is placed within it, it creates the illusion of a much bigger room. What this also allowed me to do is play with height. This is a very good trick to make a space more visually interesting. When it comes to the pieces you place up against the wall to go for pieces that have height and draw the eye upwards. If you use only low furniture items in a room, it creates this upper half of the space that is not being used. And because of that, it can be a little dull and uninteresting. So placing lower items in the center of the room and higher items up against the wall makes the eye not only go from left to right, but also up and down. And this just creates a lot more visual interest without making it look busy or cluttered. Another great trick for making a space more cohesive and visually interesting is playing with different forms of lighting. Instead of only using ceiling lights, which are great for task lighting, but can also be boring and uninteresting, I used a hanging lamp above the dining table, a standing lamp and matching spots, and table lamps. This one is the perfect green color. I also still love this living colors lamp that changes color. This is easily 15 years old but I think it gives the space very warm and cozy vibes, especially after dark. When it comes to accessories, I've been very selective and intentional about only using a few and playing with different kinds of colors, shapes, and textures to again, add more interest and variety to the space. I also brought our plants, which can brighten up any space in my opinion. I have them placed at different spots around the room and in the window sills. I like to keep my windowsills simple and clutter free, so I don't like to go overboard with placing things there. I enjoy accessories that say something about the people who live there. Since Japanese green tea is one of my passions, I keep this wooden tea box with my Japanese tea accessories right in view as a centerpiece. The only other accessories are some oak wall hooks that hold a little mirror in a playful shape and a black metal picture frame, as well as this wall clock that I love. And all of these wall items also serve again to bring more height to the space and draw the eye upwards. Before I show you our balcony and office, let's go back to the four doors in the hallway area. The first door goes to a separate toilet space. This is actually not uncommon in the Netherlands to have a toilet that is separate from the bathroom. This area is quite small. There is not much to see yet. It is a little boring right now and I have some plans to give it a fresh paint job. I'm thinking maybe a beautiful matcha latte kind of green as well as adding maybe some shelving and wall decorations. So that is going to be a separate project sometime later. Since this room is tiny, there is no space for even a small sink, so we have to wash our hands in the bathroom sink. But it is clean, it's functional, so I'm happy with it. Right next to the toilet is a door that opens up to our bathroom. The bathroom in this apartment is actually really spacious, and it's been recently remodeled, so it is not even a year old yet. It has a corner tub that you see right in front of you when entering and the shower is in the tub as well. So we use this simple shower curtain to make sure water doesn't go everywhere when we take a shower. 
The overall color scheme in here is quite lovely since it's very calming and clean. It's probably not the kind of tiles and cabinets I would have picked out myself. I would have gone for different colors, maybe something lighter, but I am very happy and grateful to have such a luxurious bathroom. On the right is a large sink, a mirror, and some cabinets. To keep it simple and minimal, we only keep our soap and lotion out on the surface here. The rest we keep out of sight. This is everything I own. It's makeup items, hair care items, makeup brushes, and some extra miscellaneous items. Next to the cabinets is a corner where we keep our washing machine, hamper, and a little basket I use when I'm hanging or folding my laundry. We don't own a dryer, so I line dry everything, and I do that in another room, which I will show you next. To the opposite of the two doors we just saw are another two doors. The first leads into a small extra bedroom that we use for storage. This room will definitely be repainted eventually, but since it's just mainly for storage, we're not in any rush. Dutch homes don't typically have any built-in storage space or laundry rooms, things like that. So it is just very nice to have a small extra bedroom that we can use for storing everything that we just want to keep out of sight. This is also where I hang and dry my laundry. It only has a small window, but this room gets a lot of wind usually, so it blows the laundry nice and fresh. During the summer months, we keep our standing air conditioning unit and fans here. As soon as the summer is over, we'll move these things downstairs in the building where we have a small storage space until next year. The cabinet we moved with us from the old apartment. I am not a big fan of the gray wood tone anymore, so that is why I replaced most of them. But for here, it is perfect because this fits all of our home maintenance tools cleaning supplies, as well as the bigger, clunkier gear that I need for filming, like my lighting equipment and tripod. Also some miscellaneous things like vases and things like that. Right next to this small room is our bedroom, and this is actually quite spacious. I was very happy to find an apartment with a bedroom that not just fits a bed, but also fits our nightstands and our wardrobe, because this is the first apartment that we looked at that didn't just fit a bed. This room is first on our list for a new paint job. I am not a fan of this faded pink color on the wall. It looks a little dingy and the previous owners left around 20 big holes in these walls that we had to fill. So these walls really need some love. I'm thinking of keeping the wall facing the bed white and then painting the other walls a nice calming blue tone. Our bed is a four-year-old gray box spring, and when it comes to beds, I do prefer the look of a wooden frame and a wooden headboard, but in the end, I ended up going for a comfort instead. Because I read a lot in bed, I always sit up against the headboard before I go to sleep with a book, and sometimes if we have to make a choice between aesthetics and comfort or practicality, I like to be very intentional there. And in terms of bedding, I also prefer to keep it super simple, just one pillow each and a blanket. This is the first time we got proper blackout curtains in the bedroom. These are a game changer. If you are not sure about getting them, I highly recommend you do. They don't just block out all the light, but they also help to partially block the summer heat and even traffic noise. They really improve my sleep quality. To the left are two wardrobes, one for each of us. Again, Dutch homes don't typically have closets built in, so I designed these IKEA PAX wardrobes myself to fit our needs perfectly. Let me know if you would like me to do a new wardrobe tour soon. Overall, this room can still use a little love, but when it comes to the bedroom, first and foremost, I like to keep it very simple and sparsely decorated because it is a place where I want to rest. So I want to keep the visual stimuli to a minimum there. Now I want to show you the third bedroom, which we use as our home office. The door that opens up to it is in the living room. This is another favorite space of mine. As you enter, you see this chair and a small table. We have had this set up for quite a few years already and we moved it with us. It is a great little space for curling up with a good book. We also sometimes take meetings in this chair if we don't have to type anything. The table is also made from solid oak and it has a very interesting design, especially the twisted legs. When you combine it with the more classic look of the chair, this adds a touch of playfulness. 
On the wall on the opposite side of the door is our bookcase. I was really happy about adding one piece with open shelving in the apartment where I could display some things that are visually attractive or that hold special meaning for me. So I love that I now have a place to display some books, my YouTube play button and my Studio Ghibli collection. I think every home should have some items that say something about the person who lives there, which is what this furniture piece is about for me. Then behind these doors, I keep most of my work stuff that I want to keep out of sight, as well as our papers and administration, our picture albums. These items are easy to access when we need them, but also hidden from view when we don't. Lastly, on this wall, we have our adjustable standing desk. We brought this desk with us from our previous apartment where we only had space for a very small desk. Here, we would have the space for a larger desk, but it is still new and very practical. So we're just keeping this one. We don't keep anything on the desk except for a laptop stand and a keyboard since we like our workspace to be really minimal and simple. To the right of the desk, I have a wicker basket that I use for storing all of my yoga stuff. Again, nice and easily accessed when I need them and also cutely stored when I don't. This room isn't finished yet. Mostly, I think that this wall is still looking a little sad. So I will continue to think about ways to finish out the room. Mostly, I like to have things there that inspire creativity and inspiration since I rely on that a lot for my work. So one example of something that inspires creativity for me is Studio Ghibli, which is why I am very happy to have this Totoro poster up here. Another huge perk that this apartment came with is a very spacious balcony. It stretches out all the way over the length of the apartment, from the back of the office to the back of the living room. The balcony is a project that I think I will keep for next year's spring. We have two lovely camping chairs here now that are actually more comfortable than they look, so we can enjoy the balcony as it is and we'll give it a good scrubbing too. Thank you so much for coming over and visiting my home. I would love to know from you which of these rooms is your favorite, so please leave that in the comments and I will talk to you there. If you feel like you could use a little help when it comes to your own home and decluttering your things, then you can always check out my decluttering ebook. It has all my tips and advice for tackling all kinds of clutter and creating a dream space where you love to be. So I will leave the link to the ebook in the description box below. As always, questions, comments, conversations down below. Thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful day and I will see you again next week. Bye bye. Can you believe I've lived here for two months and I've never tried out the huge corner bathtub? <laughs> I guess maybe I'm not really a bath person. I don't know, but I will definitely try it out soon.